Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the things that surprised my patrons the most. And then I'm going to react to it. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the biggest surprises in audio. Big shout out to today's sponsor. This episode couldn't be done without them. That's right, Sith Audio Audiophile Potting Soil. You know why your plants aren't as green as they used to be? Well, it's because they don't have Audiophile Potting Soil. That's why Sith Audio is here to save you. It's got fertilizer, it's got Audiophile stuff in it, it's got black dirt in it. Sith Audio Audiophile Potting Soil, it's what your plants crave. One bag of this, this size, 500 bucks. Guaranteed to be able to plant, revive, and revitalize five five year house plants. Sith Audio Audio File Potting Soil. So I put it out to my wonderful patrons a question. The question was, what is the biggest surprise you had in a product related to audio? That surprise could be good or it could be bad. And then I just take the feedback and I read it here. And then maybe I, I comment on it. First one is Stoic, Stoic Dan, Stoic Dan. Original Andrew Jones Pioneers SP BS 21 LRs. Compared to everything else in their price range at the time, they were incredible. Really created the modern, affordable hi fi movement, in my opinion, and, up, and set up everything he did at ELAC. Um, I don't necessarily disagree on this one because I was finally able to get the little bookshelves in. And the one thing, the one takeaway I had with those is number one, the woofer was really small. Number two, I was amazed just how much bass came out of those speakers. Number three, it was the first set of what I would consider warm speakers, sound staging speakers. So it was really shocking just what type of sound one could get out of those speakers. So I agree. It was a huge departure from what I was accustomed to hearing, which was more of a V curve, U curve, boosted on the bottom, boosted on the top. If anything, I thought these were boosted on the bottom, somewhat rolled off on top. But it was a new sound signature that I hadn't heard before. I wish they still made them. I don't know why they don't make them anymore, but I wish they still did. Mike says the Dragonfly Red, just a light year step above the internal phone DAX. Again, I'm gonna agree with Mike, I was gonna call him Stoic Dan, but it's not Stoic Dan anymore, it's Mike. I got the Dragonfly Red used before the channel ever started, and I noticed a huge difference. Completely cleaned up the, the signal, the music, so much more detail. Yeah, I was pretty impressed. That's when my love of exploration of DAX started, was with the Dragonfly Red. And so if you have a computer, if you've been going through your computer for your headphones, through your headphone jack, maybe take a look at a, uh, a USB dongle deck. The dogs are starting to bark. <laughs> Kenneth Oransky, an inexpensive op amp upgrade. Replace the NE5532 with an LME49, what? 497.20 and a headphone amplifier. Didn't have seventy or eighty dollars to invest, so he spent like three dollars and seventy-five cents. Soundstage went super wide. Overall sound quality gained tremendously. Sounded like I was using better headphones. Big, big good surprise. I like that. Big good surprise. Yes, I have had definitely an improvement switching out op amps. I think the biggest one was on the Aima A07 when I switched those from the stock op amps. It wasn't a stock op amp, it was a Texas Instrument op amp. To the Sparkos Labs op amps. I'm talking extreme clarity. The Sparkos op amps aren't cheap, but what I will tell you is it's a significant improvement upon the, well, the op amps that come with it. So I think for, I, th I think they're $80, maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah, I would consider looking at that upgrade. And the easy part is there's no soldering involved because the IEMA A07 has an op amp receiver already on the board. So you just pump out the op amp, put in another one, and then you're up and running. 
So definitely take a look and see if you can switch out your op amps on your electronics. Could be a big improvement for five bucks or less. AirPod Pros, that's right, Paul Kobe says AirPod Pros. First true wireless earbuds that were good sound quality. Your best headphones are the ones that you use the most. And I agree with Paul 100%. I actually have maybe in my pocket right now. I guess I don't. The Soundcore Liberty Pro 3s because I use them all the time. And it's not just for music. It's mostly for movies. I don't really use them for making calls either. So it's, it's for music when I'm mowing the lawn and things like that and working out, which happens about once a year. And then also when I'm, well, watching YouTube or movies at night. So I use them constantly. So I agree with Paul. I don't have the uh, AirPod Pros, but I have the Liberty Pro 3s, so I get what he's saying. Oh, sure. Because at the end of the day, even if they're the not, if they're not the best IEMs on the planet, but they're still good enough and you enjoy music, then that's all that really matters. A little bit of a plug for the Liberty 3 Pros, though, from Soundcore, I almost said Anchor, is that they do have a included application, which has an EQ, a bunch of noise canceling modes. You can do all sorts of customization in the app. I didn't think that one was going to be on here. All right, so I'm going to try to jump through this one because this is from Steve B. And it's pretty long. I've had surprises, both good and bad. On the good side, I bought a Macintosh 252 hybrid amp. At first, I didn't like it. Everything sounded veiled, and I was really bummed. On the bright side, the phono stage was amazing. So I got some advice from the Thomas & Stereo and bought some copper silver amalgam cables. About $200 Canadian. And that really brightened up the sound. Uh, I actually didn't know this was about cables. I have owned the amp for about six months now, and when I don't listen to it for a few days, I am always blown away by how good the music sounds. I'm always surprised that cables would make such a difference. Um, okay, I honestly didn't know this was about cables. Okay? Okay. All right. Second one. Here we go. On the bad side, I have owned two iFi products the Zen Phono Stage and the Zen DAC. I ended up sending both of them back because the top end seam rolled off. I really did not like the sound. I bought them because of the good reviews on YouTube and I was surprised by the sound. The Phono Stage was replacing a Fozzie Audio Tube Phono Stage around $60, which I have the same one. I use it all the time. And the Zen DAC was replacing the built-in DAC in my Yamaha receiver at the time. Neither lived up to the hype. Well. Steve, I'm going to have to disagree with you because I'm not sure that anybody was hyping up the iFi Zen Phono with maybe the exception of me. And I wasn't hyping it. I liked it. I think it sounds clean. I think it has zero perceptible noise pumping through the speakers. So I like the iFi Zen Phono. I don't think it's rolled off on top. I think you're right about the Zen DAC. I think that has a warm-ish, more lush sound. So I can see the Zen DAC, and I can see the Zen Phono too, if it if you didn't like it. So that's interesting because both of those products are well received, well regarded. I'm not going to touch the first paragraph of the 10 foot pole right now. Steve B did not like the iFi products. Can't say that I blame you. Martin S, one of my best buddies. Well, they're all you're all my best buddies, but Martin's. Martin and I have spent some time together in a car on the rooftop in Austin, Texas. Can I skirt the question a bit? It's not a product. It's how a love of audio and an interest in cheap audio, well, really, value audio, spawned one of the only non-toxic hi-fi communities in existence. What a delightful surprise. Wow. Martin, thank you. But it's not because of me. I mean, I just turned on the switch. It's because of all of you and how you've come in and how we interact, how we help other people. So, and if anybody's helped more people in this community, it's you, Martin. So thank you, Martin. What a nice, that, that was a nice surprise for me. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and hit the like button, all the notifications, bell notifications, pots and pans notifications. If you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. We have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord group, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also buy some merchandise from me. Links are below this video. You can also use the thanks button down by the share button. Click on it. 
buy me a cup of coffee or two, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. Also, links in the description, most of those links are affiliate links. So, if you click and you buy, it doesn't cost you any more, but it does help out the channel. All right, we got another op amp vote. David Prather, the IEMA A07, with the Sparkos op amps upgrade, Sparkos Labs op amps. I don't think I'll ever sell this little guy. I have better amps, but they cost tons more money. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to bust it out. I haven't had the A07 in rotation for a while, so I'm gonna have to break that out and just see how good it sounds. Thanks, David Prather, for reminding me about it. David M, I graduated from high school in 1837. Just kidding, 1987. I was fortunate enough to get a few cash gifts Anyway, he bought a CD player. I had heard CDs before, but not for any long or serious listening. I hooked up the player to my cheap JVC receiver and a 20 year old pair of bookshelves. Anyway, I'm skipping, I'm gonna, I'm gonna summarize this one. I've never heard music sounding so beautiful before. The difference between the CDs and cassettes and records was night and day. A year later, he broke it couldn't have it fixed anyway it's hard to properly convey how huge a revelation that cds were to the recorded music industry good times cds i love it you know who else loves it david m loves cds all right brent says your recent suggestion during prime day for liberty 3 pro earbuds we already talked about them didn't we got a warehouse deal for 76 dollars they look brand new by the way, if you're ever checking out something on Amazon that has an Amazon warehouse deal, get it. You got like a 90-day return policy, and generally speaking, just something wrong with the packaging. Anyway, I have upper frequency loss due to years of Black Hawk flying. Brent, thank you for your service. After doing the sound test, I can hear things in music I didn't even realize were missing. I literally smiled while using them for the first time. I am now seriously consider getting an EQ to help compensate for the upper ranges. That's fantastic. Fantastic that a $75 piece of hi-fi gear or IEMs, whatever you want to call it, can make that big of a difference in your life. And you're making me smile from ear to ear because I love this story. So if you have any of those and some Android phones have a hearing test built into it, do the hearing test and see what they come up from an EQ. For me, it's a little bit heavy handed on the top end but can make a huge difference. And it's free on a lot of products. My man, Tyler Cheeseman says the Atom T8V powered studio monitors. I read about how they sound and the large frequency range they have, but nothing could have prepared me for the reality of that claim. These powered studio monitors are the best sounding speakers I own, even against $1,200 speakers. They reach so low, even at high volume. No subwoofer is required. Making me want to go buy these. I've never done a review on them. Whether you're a studio producer, musician, or audiophile, these are going to make your source sound amazing and accurate. To date, I consider them one of the most impressive purchases I've ever made. Yowza. That makes me want to go buy them today. I have to, I have to go check out, and check out and see how much they are. Tyler Cheeseman, T8V. I think I think Zeos did a review on these. All right, I gotta go check those out. Because of your testimonial, Tyler. Love it. Tony S says the Wharfdale diamond. 12.1s, you give me the diamond. Remember what movie that's from? Short round, that's, a, that's, your, that's your clue. You give me the diamond. Anyway, the Wharfdale diamond 12.1s. Although they got rave reviews, I wasn't really expecting them to be as good as they are, considering the $400 price. Beat every other stand mount speaker I've ever owned, including monitor audio silver S2s, BMW 6A6, TDL something something, Gale, Proac, Mirage, BMW, the little Wharfdales, 12.1s. Well, that's cool to hear, man. I had the 12.2s. I thought they were really good. But man, I'm glad you like your 12.1s. It's pretty cool. He goes down in the comments more to say he tried the 12.2s. It's not that he didn't like the 12.2s better, just they were a little bit too big for his room. Anyway, big vote for Wharfdale 12.1s. Little disclaimer, I did not set this one up, okay? 
this is exactly what Keith G had to say. The i5 Zen stream had lots of good early reviews. Not from me. And it was cheaper than a lot of streamers at the time. Not really. For 10 months, it was a nightmare. 10 months to use except for Bluetooth. Tidal Connect and Rune disconnected or didn't work at all. Every system upgrade was going to be the one to fix it all. Now, a year and a half later, it works. Now a Weem does more for a lot less money. Live and learn. Yeah, Keith, I'm with you. I was so excited to get that product in, and then I used it, and or tried to use it. I got it working, but the back end was a nightmare. You had to type in IP addresses and things like that to change things in it. It was obviously done on the backbone of Volumio, so they, and it wasn't even like the full Volumio, so they just took some Volumio and then changed it around a little bit. I don't know what it's like because that thing is not here. They sent that to me twice. They sent it to me once. I sent it back after I did the review. They got upset about the review. They sent me another one, and then they kept hammering me on why I was wrong, basically, so I just sent it back. So, yeah. Hi-Fi Zen Stream, not my favorite product. I don't care how good it sounds. If you can't get it to work, then it doesn't sound like anything. Could be fixed now, though, so go check it out. I mean, I like Hi-Fi, the Zen stuff for the most part, but not the Zen Stream. All right, my boy Steve G. This guy's been an audiophile for 50 years. No, actually, I really love Steve because he's got a huge amount of experience he also sells stuff on disc hogs so he gets a lot of vinyl in so if i have any questions about vinyl i'm usually going to a couple of guys on my patreon and steve g is one of them anyway biggest surprise was the huge sonic improvement resulting from running direct power from the breaker box to the new outlet box in the listening rooms I'd spent a bundle over the years on speakers, amps, turntables, cartridges, preamps, etc. But this revealed a level of performance from my system I'd never heard before. More space, air, better imaging, and clearer 3D. Cleaner highs, more solid bass. Okay? Now, we're not talking about any type of fancy cables. He just wired something directly to his breaker box. It's pretty cool. I think you told me it cost him around 4 hundred dollars to do that so not a huge expense but i'd never considered doing that before don't attempt it on your own though unless you're a licensed electrician tom m throwing some shade at blue sound blue os has surprised me with its lack of consistent integration to streaming services and an overall worse experience than just streaming from my computer linking to the node using Tidal connect provides a good experience but with Amazon, it's complex process requiring additional technology to set the highest quality streaming. I don't disagree with you there. The Blue OS app itself is just a utility. I agree with you there. Not a very informative or interesting interface. Okay. Overall, I'm really disappointed in the user experience of the Node. So I will say this. I have listened to probably more streamers than most people have in the last year or so. And... I am very sensitive about the streaming software or the platform to stream from. Most of them are very utilitarian. Some are better than others. I will say I think Blue Sound OS is better than others. With the caveat of Amazon Music, because Amazon Music doesn't integrate well with all of the streaming software platforms. It integrates with a lot of them, but not well. Tidal is a little bit smoother. Kobuz is a lot smoother. Spotify is generally a lot smoother because Spotify really doesn't integrate with streamers. What they do is just have a connect feature. So really, it's just Spotify and then you're controlling it from your phone. But with Amazon Music, there is a lot of hiccups. Some do it better than others. Ironically, I think We Mini does Amazon Music just about as good as anybody. But if you're looking for a richer interface, I think you're going to have to look to something like Rune. And I know you're paying an additional premium on top of a streamer that you already bought. I think it's going to be the most, if you can stream from your computer, just go with that because you have all the cool stuff anyway with the album art and things like that. But some people that aren't using a computer, I still think Blue Sound is one of the best. The problem is Weem is so good at a fraction of the price. And I think it's only going to get better. Kind of with you on the Blue Sound but not 100%, because 
everybody struggles. None of them are great, but Blue Sound is one of the better ones when it comes to Amazon Music. All right, last but not least, we have Steve. Yeah, I know you're not gonna like this, Randy, and maybe others too, but for me, the Mica RB42s, the way they scale with amps, the cost to price ratio, the incredible size, fantastic. I don't, it's not that I don't like the RB42s, I just don't think they're particularly exciting. I think they're very linear, which a lot of people may like. I think they're very small too, so I don't know a lot of applications that they're gonna work well in outside of a desktop situation. However, it's about you, it's not about me. They're also 83 dB, so yes, probably when you put a very powerful, more expensive amplifier on them, they are going to sound a lot better because they're 83 dB. So you, they probably need a little bit of juice to come to life. It's not that I thought they were horrible. I just don't think they were for me personally, but I'm glad you love them. I know a lot of people love them. They're built like tanks. All right, then we're gonna end it up with Matt K. The bad, the topping E30. It has great measurements and some good recommendations online. It was awful. The digital sheen glare was something I could not unhear. The good, Schgit Modi Multibit. It seems much more dynamic and has a better soundstage than the Modi 3 Plus. Okay, so I agree with Matt pretty much on everything. I never liked the Topping E30. I definitely don't like the Topping E32. I thought it was just completely harsh. Although I think my first review of the Topping E30, the first generation, wasn't terrible. The more DACs I've heard since then, the more I just I realized just how bad the Topping E30 and E32 are. E30 Mark II. Yeah, I don't care about the measurements. I don't, like, this is what kills me about people that dismiss DACs when it comes to measurements. So go buy the Topping E30 Mark II and then get something like the Zen DAC version two, or even the version one, or like the Gishelli Labs J2, the AKM version, and tell me they don't sound different. So people say DAC sound, they all sound the same. They all sound the same. No, not even remotely so. I hope you like this video. I, I like doing these videos, it's a lot of fun. What is your experience though? What is your biggest surprise, good or bad, that you've had from a hi-fi purchase? Put it down in the comments below. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu, binge listen. Fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.